Hello everybody. So today we're going to program our own app and then uh, control our ESP32. I chose an ESP32 and not an Arduino because there's versions of the ESP32 with built-in Bluetooth. On top of that, the ESP32 is super cheap and very fast, so easy to program with. So on the left, you see the screen capture of the app that we're going to create today. And it has three buttons that we can control the ESP32 with. The ESP32 itself is shown on the right bottom and it's connected to three LEDs to just indicate whether or not the buttons are on and off. On the right top, you see the serial over USB interface that the ESP32 is connected to the computer with. So you can now press these buttons and that's how you can switch on or off the LEDs. We see as well in the serial interface that button 1 is switched on, button 2 is switched on uh, or now off again. I have to note though that there's quite some lag between the screen capture of my mobile phone and the computer. But this is just an artifact of uh, this, making this video. The button response is, is pretty uh, instantaneous. Alright, so let's go and create this app. I've posted all the code you need to make this program on GitHub. The link is in the description below. And so we'll go to this link and just download the complete package open it up. It's a zip file, so we briefly unzip it. And you'll find two folders in this zip file. One is Arduino that contains the code that goes on the ESP32. And the other one is MIT Inventor, which is the code we'll use for the app later on. We'll start though with programming the ESP32. So the way that it's set up is as follows. We will have a simple serial over Bluetooth interface that goes to the mobile phone. And uh, that one I called ESP underscore BT, BT for Bluetooth. And for that, we're going to use the Bluetooth serial.h library. And this will only work on the ESP32. So if you, for instance, use one of those um, Bluetooth add-ons for standard Arduino, uh, you will need to use a different library uh, for the Bluetooth connection. Other than that, the rest of the code will work. In addition to the uh, serial interface to your mobile phone, we'll as well use our standard serial over USB in the code that we refer to with serial. So you can see that here in the code directly. We, we start with loading uh, the Bluetooth serial.h library. This library will only compile uh, without faults if you have ESP32 modules uh, configured. Uh, if you have problems programming your ESP32, please do have a look at my other video about programming ESP32 and configuring it correctly. Okay, moving on then. Um, we have here a class Bluetooth serial called ESPBT. And that class will use to uh, read uh, from the serial uh, interface uh, to see whether or not someone sent a command from the mobile phone. Uh, I have three pins to connect uh, LEDs. Feel free to adapt that to any pin at all. And just to verify if the code's working, you actually don't even need the LEDs. You can just look at the um, serial uh, interface to your computer uh, on the, your serial monitor and see whether or not um, a button is activated. Then we have a byte or an int um, incoming, which is where we are going to store any data received from the mobile phone. And we already start here with the setup. Uh, the setup just initializes the uh, serial interface to the computer and the serial over Bluetooth interface to the mobile phone. This initializes the Bluetooth interface and it defines then the name with which the Bluetooth connection of your ESP32 will be identified on your phone. So later on, if we do a Bluetooth connection, we'll look for ESP32 control to connect to. We then also initialize our three pins and uh, we'll go straight to the main loop. In the main loop, um, the only thing that the ESP32 does is it checks if there is a Bluetooth command available. And if it is, it reads it in and it then interprets what it receives. Now we have three buttons that can either be on or off. So what you can see is that I send basically two integers over from the phone to the ESP32. 
The first one identifies the button, so it's either 1, 2, or 3. And the second one is the value. It's 0 when it's off and 1 when it's on. And we receive uh, that value uh, on the um, ESP32 and then just separate the two. So for instance, if you send command 21, that means that button 2 is now activated. And 20 switches off the button again. 31 activates button 3, etc., etc. So that's exactly what we do here. We receive a byte and then uh, separate the uh, button identifier from the actual value. Is it switched on or is it switched off? Um, and the button is identified by just uh, flooring the incoming signal and dividing it by 10. And um, the value then uh, is done by doing a modulus with 10, uh, so because obviously 31 modulus 10 results in 1. Okay, so then we have separated the button identifier and the value, and we can then do a simple switch um, so that the correct button can be switched on or off. And that's basically the code. So that, uh, as long as the ESP32 settings are correct, we can go ahead and program this code to our ESP32. Now, we shouldn't here forget to press the uh, boot button. Let me just briefly do that. So our next step is to connect our phone to the uh, ESP32. And to do so, you need to go to the Bluetooth settings of your phone. Uh, you, will, you should now see our Bluetooth device listed under Available Devices. As here, ESP32 Control, that's how we called our Bluetooth interface. If you don't see it, you might need to do a manual scan, but I'll go ahead and just pair uh, the ESP32 um, here. And then you're good to go. The next step is to create an app to control your ESP32 with. This app we're going to create with an online tool uh, that is available at appinventor.mit.edu. If you go to this website, you can uh, go to create apps on the top and you'll get a screen something like this, where you'll just have uh, an empty start page. You can start dragging, dropping stuff into this and create your own apps with this. Uh, but I made it a little easier for you and you can just straight away upload the code that you need. So to do so, you go to projects and then import project from my computer and you choose a file, and the file you need is the one that is in uh, where, wherever you put your, your downloaded file into MIT Inventor, and then you select this ESP32 Bluetooth app dot AIA. So after loading the code, this is what you should see. Basically, you see the representation of the app, which is called Designer in the Designer tab here. And then on the right top, there's a blocks tab as well that shows the underlying code. Now we'll start with the designer tab. Um, here uh, we have several components. The components are listed in the list over, over here on the um, uh, right. And each of these uh, items have properties that you can set. Uh, we can rename or delete them here in the list and you can change the allocation over here uh, in the uh, app itself. And then there's also non-visible components. Now, one non-visible component we need is obviously the Bluetooth interface, that one's shown over here. Uh, and the second one is a clock. Now, strictly speaking, for this particular app, we don't need the clock, but might you want to have also data sent from the ESP32 back to the um, app, then you need a clock to periodically check if there's new data available from the ESP32. So let's briefly go over the code. In essence, it uh, initializes the Bluetooth interface and then shows it into a list. So the first command here on the top, screen one initialize, what it needs to do then is it needs to create a list of the addresses and names of Bluetooth interfaces that your phone knows about, that it is paired with in essence. 
So that's what happens on that interface, in that command on the top. Then after you've selected a certain Bluetooth interface, um, the app will try to connect to it. And if that works out, it uh, will tell you on the screen, Bluetooth is connected. And uh, it will also uh, hide this Bluetooth list. So Bluetooth list visible is false. If along the lines, something goes wrong with the Bluetooth interface, for instance, let's say the ESP32 doesn't have power or something like that, then an error will occur. Um, it will then uh, set the Bluetooth connection back to not connected and it will make the Bluetooth list visible again so that you can choose a new a Bluetooth interface to connect with. In the bottom, you see now the three buttons that we have, button one, two, and three, and the code is actually identical for all three of them. We have a picture for uh, the button when it's off, there's a picture for the button when it's on, and so those are interchanged whenever you select the button, and it will write then uh, the appropriate integer to the Bluetooth interface. So for instance here in button number two, um, whenever the button is enabled, then 21 is written to the Bluetooth interface. And if it is disabled, 20 is written to the Bluetooth interface. And that's all there's to it. So the next step is, how do you actually get that code on your phone? So in order to connect this app to your phone, um, you need to have this MIT AI2 companion. Um, so go to your Google uh, Play Store and you can just install it from there. I have it already installed. So I'll go ahead and just open this. If you uh, open this app, you'll get this particular interface and it shows you connect with QR code or scan QR code. Now scan QR code is the easiest way to connect. So let me briefly blend out the, my mobile phone, you go to connect here in the app and go down to AE companion and then you get this uh, QR code. Now let me enable the, my phone again. So you select scan QR code and it will then enable your camera and start scanning for a QR code. And then you basically just hold your camera in front of your computer so that it can see the QR code. It will then automatically connect and compile and, and then show your app straight away on your mobile phone. We see here a list of Bluetooth interfaces and the one we want to connect to is ESP32 ESP control, which is the lowest one. So I'll go ahead and select that. The Bluetooth status now went to connected and we can straight away now start enabling and disabling buttons. So with this way we can verify the code. And the fun thing is if I now go to design here and for instance change something radical, let's, let me just put that button over here, then straight away I will see this as well, this change in the app on my mobile phone, as you can see over here. The one thing though is of course that the Bluetooth connection is now lost again, so I need to go and reconnect to ESP32 control. As such. And now I can again enable and disable buttons. So if you now want to test if this program really is working or not, uh, the best way to do that is to open your IDE that you use to uh, program the ESP32 with and go to the serial monitor. Serial monitor here is on the right top. And well, you can see I already had something open here. But you got to make sure that the baud rate is right. The baud rate needs to be at 19,200 bots or 19K. And um, if I then uh, press buttons on my phone, then you can see straight away that it pushes some messages out to the serial interface. And with that, you can see that the um, ESP32 is receiving the commands via Bluetooth without a problem.
Of course, you can um, put some LEDs to the output pins of the uh, ESP32 and test with LEDs as well, like I showed you in the beginning um, of this video. And if you want to do that, it's also very simple. The only thing you need is three, three LEDs and three resistors. Uh, you always need to put a resistor in series with an LED. Uh, and for the ESP32 working at 3.3 volts, you need about 100 ohms. It kind of depends on the LED, how bright you want it to, uh, to shine, but 100, 100 ohms works. Uh, so you go to the ports that I defined uh, in the example program. That is port number 4, 0, and 2. Uh, but you, of course, you can assign different ports as well. And from the output port, you just have this resistor first and then the LED and then you go to ground and that way you can um, straight away see uh, when you uh, press one of the knobs on the phone um, you can see then the LED go on and off. Okay so once you're really happy with the code and it does exactly what you want you probably want to compile it and get a real app on the phone that you don't need this um, AI companion program anymore uh, to assist you with running your code. And the way to do that is that you need to build your code. Uh, so what, what you can do now is you go to build in the MIT App Inventor and uh, you go to um, the upper one. So provide QR code for APK. So an APK is the compiled program that can run on your phone. However, because you will install this yourself and it doesn't go through the official Google Play Store, you will need to enable this. Uh, your phone per default will only allow you to install programs from the Play Store. But as you write this program yourself and as MIT App Inventor is a reliable source, this is something where um, it's really safe to enable that and to pro program uh, your own program onto your phone. So program compilation is done. Uh, and the only thing you need to do now is uh, to enable the camera on your phone and basically just scan the um, App Inventor QR code. You tap on that and it will then download it. And uh, after that, you can install it. So here it says now ESP32 Bluetooth app uh, .apk has been downloaded and you can open it and install it on your phone. Okay, that's about it. So play around with this, uh, make some cool apps. Uh, write me in the comments below what app you're working on. And so I, I kept the explanation here of MIT App Inventor rather light. It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you run into difficulties, just let me know and I can uh, perhaps do an additional video around that uh, programming platform. Have fun guys and see you in the next video.